Hello, my name is Gaia. I'm Sara. And we work at the CFAB Lab International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy. We wanted to show you some of the possibilities that a fab lab has to offer to schools using their appliances and their machines, or also a version of these kinds of techniques that can be used directly in the schools without having these kind of possibilities. The first thing we want to talk to you about is 3D printing. So let's move towards the printers. A selection of different kinds of 3D printers. One of them is working right now, as you can see. The process is very simple. We start from a roll of plastic. The we have different kinds of plastic that we can use. The one that is more commonly used is PLA, and it comes from uh, different kinds of starch uh, from plants and so on, and then it's not polluting and doesn't get off any kind of smell and fumes that can be harmful or not that nice to have in a room. So here the object is being built layer by layer. The plastic roll that you see on the side is fed through the machine, heated up in this point where the tip is, and it builds one layer after the other. Here you can see a selection of objects made with a 3D printer. They can be mathematical objects, useful also for teaching about geometry and so on, or also artistical objects like this one. But to understand in an easy way how 3D printing works and how the layers are stacked, we can also use the more simple to find the cardboard. In fact, another way to create 3D printing is by stacking layers of cardboard one onto another in order to create a 3D object. Here we have some examples uh, mixed, uh, which combine uh, geography and uh, cardboard. So basically, uh, by creating the layers, you can build a 3D model. We started from a 3D model of the island, so we can choose if 3D printing it or making layers. We can see here another example of uh, eyes curves turned in the other way, turned by 90 degrees, so we created an artistic model. Uh, these models were created with a laser cutter, but we don't need necessarily to have one of those. In fact, we can print on a, with a normal printer the layers, we can uh, cut them with scissors and stack one layer onto another in order to create our model. So we can show you the procedure on how to get the 3D model. In order to, uh, to get our 3D model, we use a free uh, website which is called Touch Terrain. Here we can set our parameters and then choose to export uh, the file. It is based on Google Maps, which means that we can choose any, any place of the world. So here we can download our uh, zip file. Okay, so once we have the file, it is an STL file, which means we can choose whether to 3D print it or to slice it in order to make a cardboard model. The software that we use to create the isocurves or different layers is called Slicer for uh, Fusion 360. It is a free software. Once we import the file, we can choose whether to create uh, uh, horizontal or vertical isocurves. In one case, we receive uh, um, geographically correct 3D models. Otherwise, uh, like we showed before, we can create vertical isocurves, which gives us um, an artistic model. So we can actually choose what we want to do. In case you are provided with a um, laser cutter, you can download the DXF file and cut the curves in order to make um, the model. Otherwise, the other option is to, uh, to print on a piece of paper the PDF file and uh, glue it on a cardboard so you can by hand cut the layers and stack them in order to have a 3D model. Here are the single slices that must then be glued. Be careful because you see the numbers will be stacked in this direction as you can see here. 
And we are not obviously limited to making geographical objects with this technique, but we can build whatever we like, looking on the web for 3D files and using this kind of software to create the project.